Hi folks, I want to take a minute to show you guys uh, how this Season and Ecliptic Simulator works, Seasons and Ecliptic Simulator. It's basically a tool that lets you explore the relationship between the tilt of the Earth and the seasons and the duration of the daytime and nighttime and the angle at which the sun rays actually strike the surface of the Earth. So let's take this thing one at a time. The handout or the uh, guide that you guys got from the website goes through and introduces you to the software as if you could run it. But the trouble we have, of course, is that many of you are unable to run it because you don't have a computer with Flash installed. And so uh, the goal of the first few pages is to fill in this table, which is uh, comprised of a list of dates and then some data that you need to fill in based on your working with the, with the tool. So what I'd like to do is to go through these uh, descriptions and work with the tool myself to fill in the table so that you can actually uh, do the rest of the project. So here, here's what it looks like. You can uh, see there are really three panes. The pane on the left illustrates the orientation of the sun and the earth relative to one another, and you can sort of see a visual picture of what that looks like. You can move the thing around and look at it from different points of view. You can actually drag the Earth around, and that changes the time of year, depending on where the Earth is in its orbit, the time of year changes. You also see a picture of the sunlight striking the Earth, and you can change your relative position on the surface of the Earth to different latitudes, and that affects how you perceive the sunlight hitting the Earth. The bottom picture shows you what it looks like at the surface. How do the sun's rays actually come in and strike the surface? And there are two views there. There's the sunlight angle, which shows you the angle at which the sunlight comes in. And there's the sunbeam spread, which shows you if you had a cylinder of sunlight, if you're, right, if you're directly in line with the beams of light coming in, you get a circle. But of course, if you move the orientation of the observer to... Uh, a much greater latitude, you see that that same cylinder of light now gets spread out over a much larger area. And of course that means the intensity at any given location on the surface is going to be much less because you're taking the same amount of energy and spreading it over a larger area. The other view we have here, if I click on this guy, is what does this look like from the sun's point of view? So you see the sun always sees the uh, so-called subsolar point, that's this point where the beams strike the Earth most directly, and you can see at this particular time of year, we're in, we're in deep winter here, this is the winter solstice, um, that subsolar point is well below the equator. Whereas if we go to the other end of the year, if I drag this guy around to, to full summer, now the subsolar point is well above the equator. It's up here at, what, 20, 22 degrees latitude or something like that. So those are the uh, those are the basic tools you have. You've got the sun relative, uh, the sun and the Earth orientation. You've got what does it look like at the Earth, both viewing from the sun and viewing from the side, and you've got the sunlight angle viewed uh, from the surface, and then also the sunbeam spread that shows you how spread out is the sunbeam. There's one last thing to point out, and that is that. Uh, as you drag the Earth around um, during different times of year, the, the date is reflected down here. And the declination and right ascension of the Sun in the sky is also represented. If I click on Celestial Sphere here, you can see how does the Sun appear in the sky to an observer on the Earth. And it's giving you the, the celestial coordinates. In this case, um, this is winter, I guess, so the Sun is actually below the celestial plane. And if we go to the summertime, drag it over here, now you can see the sun is above the celestial equator, the, the plane of the celestial equator. Okay, so with that introduction, let's go back to that darn table and see if we can't fill in the blanks here a little bit. So I've got this table, I've uh, moved it into a, a little drawing application where I can actually type in answers. And so I want to start at February 5th. So let's go back to February 5th. There we go. Oh, maybe I can do it this way easier. February 5th. It's kind of hard to get an exact date. 
Oh, I know. We'll do it this way. That'll give me more resolution. There we go. February 5th. Bingo. Okay. So, and I'll put the winter solstice at the bottom there. Okay. And uh, so, what's the declination and right ascension of the sun? Well, the declination is negative 15.8, so it's well below the horizon. Get this out of the way. Negative 15.8. What's the declination? Oh, I, oh, phooey. That's the declination. What's the right ascension? The right ascension is uh, 21.3. Okay. Now, what about the latitude of most direct light? Let's look at that. So if I go back here, the latitude of most direct light, that's the latitude where the sunlight is striking the Earth directly. And you can see if I drag the little guy down there, I get that to be 16.1 uh, 16 south. So that would be negative 16.1 degrees. So I'll pop that on here. Negative 16.1. And what about the latitude of the least direct ray? Well, I ha it would be up here at the top where the ray's coming in. You can see that if I um, I'll switch back to the sunlight angle, as I reach the top here where the sh uh, illuminated and the non-illuminated point uh, halves of the Earth meet, I, I have a place where the sunlight comes in at zero degrees, right? Um, and that is the least direct. So that's going to be, what's my latitude there? That's 74.6 north. So I'll put that in there. 74.6 north. Oops. North. Okay. Now let's move on to March 21st. Okay. March 21st is the vernal equinox. That's the time when the Direct sunlight is hitting the equator. So we're going, it's the halfway point between summer, which would be the summer solstice. The summer solstice is the most uh, extreme deviation of the sun from the celestial equator. It's, uh, and the winter solstice is the most uh, extreme deviation below the celestial equator, and so on. The vernal equinox is the time when you're making the transition between the two. So the sun is directly hitting the equator. And let's answer these questions. Um, what is the right ascension and declination of the sun? Well, the declination is zero because the sun's right on the celestial equator. The right ascension is 23.9. So that means we're almost 3.9. Zero, and let me uh, just move this over here a little bit. This here, good. Okay. What is the latitude of most direct? Well, that's going to be zero, because uh, I can tell you right now, but we can look at it. The latitude of most direct is where the guy is. It's right there at. Well, I'm. Yeah, you can see it doesn't have enough resolution. It's basically zero, right? And uh, the latitude of Least direct is going to be 90 degrees, north or south. They're both, if I, I can go all the way down to the south, and it's the same way there. So I would put here uh, plus or minus 90. There we go. Now, May 5th is already done for us, but let's just confirm. May 5th. Least direct is going to be 74 degrees south. Now, we can't drag the guy past the North Pole, so it's only the south one that matters. Most direct, it's going to be right around there. That's 16.2 north. Notice they've already filled that in for us. 73 south, 16 and a half, essentially north. It's 2.8 hours right ascension and 16.1 degrees declination. And those are um, already filled in here. What about June 21st? Well, June 21st is the summer solstice. So that's going to be, uh, let's see, there we go, right there. 
and uh, you can see that that's the maximum deviation of the sun above the celestial equator. The guy's at 23.2 degrees north when he's at that location of most direct sunlight, and the least direct sunlight is down here right at about 66.7 south. So let's put that in. That's um, 66.7. Most direct, what's that? 22.7. Declination, 23.4. And right ascension, oh, I have that backwards. Right ascension is 23.4. Declination is 23.4. Right ascension is 6.1. Okay, what about um, August 5th? Let's look at that. So now the most direct is 17.2. The least direct, it's going to be 71 point, no, 72.3 south. And uh, let's see, right ascension is 9.2, declination 16.3, <clears throat> and we're done. Now, you probably are going to start noticing a pattern here. Let's look at September 21st. September 21st is going to be right around here. That is the so-called vernal equinox. And... That's the time when you're passing again between summer and winter, and the direct ray hits exactly at the equator. So that means we know the declination is going to be zero again. The right ascension is uh, 12 hours. The latitude of most direct sunlight is going to be um, zero, right? Boom. Boom. And the latitude, the least direct ray, well, that's going to be plus or minus 90. Go ahead and look at that. You can see that either minus 90 or plus 90. Okay, so that's the vernal equinox. Let's look at November 5th. There we go, November 5th. Where is the most direct sunlight? It's at plus six or sixteen point seven south, so that's minus sixteen point seven. And uh, oh, sorry, I put that in the wrong place. Least direct is minus sixteen point seven. Boom. What about least direct? Least direct is. 73.8. The declination is negative 16.6. And right ascension is 14.9 hours. Okay. And finally, let's do December 21st. That's going to be straight down here. There we are. That is the winter solstice. The most direct sunlight is going to be way down here south at, what, negative 23.6. The right ascension is going to be 18.1. Uh, the latitude of most direct sunlight is negative 23.6. And the latitude of least direct sunlight, we're going to have to drag him up here. Boom, 66.1. Okay. And that's all there is to that.